Say you didn't say you were bringing it. Like that's the that's the problem. Like, that's, whoa, we're getting so hard. That's probably where it is. Changing the fucking zoom. This is why I shouldn't fucking try to do fancy shit. Uh, are we good? <laughs> Motherfucker. All right. Well, sorry, boys. Uh, sorry, everyone in the chat. Um, so they can't. They can't hear you. No, they should. Be <laughs> no, now they, they can. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we'll start over. Just start over. It's fine. <laughs> it's a restart. Yeah. Uh, this is Paul did something fancy, and I tried to like jump on. This is why I don't fucking do new things <laughs> on the day of the fucking. Uh, oh well. All right. I can't. I can't do fancy stuff. I'm sorry, guys. Everyone just gets ugly things. Anyway. So, you're two years into the sport. The question uh, was, what brought me into this and how yeah. long I've been fighting, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. So, my name's Chuck Goodwin, for anyone who's just now hearing us. Um, and, Rigby, you said you want to have me on you want to have newer fighters on, and I'm a relatively newer fighter. Um, I've been doing this a little over two years in armor about a year and eight months or something like that. I, I'm, I'm horrible with dates, but it's been a relatively short period of time. Uh, I got into this because I found a YouTube video. Um, I was looking up board games online. I was looking at like a board game review. I saw these guys um, fighting, I think, in England, uh, and they were doing a video of like what would happen with a sword versus spear guy. I was like, oh, that's cool, and I watched it because it was interesting. Then it went to a bunch of guys, like a line of guys with spears versus swords, and I was like, oh, that's even cooler. And then there was a Battle of the Nations video, I think, or it was <laughs> IMCF, but it was some mass battle thing, and I was like, what is this? And I was watching it. I was like, these guys are nuts. <laughs> um, and I was like, I wonder if that's in America because it was definitely an overseas thing. And for the Knights Hall happened to be in Nashua, which again was 15 minutes from where I work and an hour from where I live. 
Um, and that's literally it. Like I just saw a video called up and was like, I want to do this. <laughs> Perfect. And yeah. And showed up. Right. And it took me forever to find the way into the building. Because I went in like the, I didn't go in the back parking lot. I went like the actual front and like like just wandered. And apparently there's no buzzer there at that time. You just walked in. <laughs> so like, I just walked in and wandered around for a while uh, until I found the place. And I just went and did, did a workout. Um, and I was like, okay, this is cool. And this is what I want. That's how I got into it. Um, cool. So like you just saw it and went, I'm gonna do it. There was nothing. Yeah, I just want to like, do it. Nothing made you like I like pull the trigger besides just a random impulse. Then I'm impulse. Like I and again, that's like that is like literally my personality. Lots of like my whole life, I've done weird hobbies or things. I'm like, I'm gonna figure out if I can do this because I figured I'd show up and either I can't do it, right? Because like, I mean, this sport is. I mean, I'm 38 years old, right? So I was 36 when I started. Um, like, not a young guy starting an sport. Like, I played lots of sports, and there's a chance I can't. I had bad. I had at the time. I was my knees were really bad. Like, I, actually, this sport has made my knees a lot better. Uh, the constant training and working out, yeah. <laughs> Yep, like I I'm had flabbergasted. Yep, yeah. Um, I actually had at the time I've been trying to play basketball, and basketball is the one sport that I grew up playing, and I can't play right now. The cutting hurts my knees in a way that I can't. And this sport actually, because of the, it's a, it's slower, right? Like you're not sprinting as much. You're, it doesn't. You're not sprinting as much. You're not. Yeah, but you're not. I mean, the lists are that aren't that big. Like even the biggest list, it's like a sprint across. You check a guy, right? Like I'm not running back and forth for an hour. Um, so I was like, I want to try this. I figured I'll either walk in and I can't do it because it won't fit. My body's too old and broken or I'll get better at it. And I can, and it turned out I was more built for this sport than probably any sport I've ever done. All right. Wow. right. Like, like dynamic wise, like this sport suits me for lots of reasons that other sport, you know, like, I mean, basketball, like I, I can't jump. Right. <laughs> so like, that's not, it doesn't make a good basketball player. A guy who's like, you know, I got like that dime vertical leap. Right. Like, yeah. Um, but like, you know, so this, I go, I don't have to jump in this sport. Like there's lots of reasons I like that. There's very little, I can. Very little jumping in armor. Yeah. Unless you're Brandon, like there's very little <laughs> jumping in armor. Um, but I mean, so I was like, let me try it. And I figured it's a, I was looking for a gym. I wanted to get back in shape. I was like, I'll, worst case, I get to work out and play with swords. Right. And that's kind of what's the way I came into it. So, um, and that was the entrance, yeah. So the first thing I kind of want to know is what what, it's like, what was it like walking in? Because I know we can kind of be an insular community. We can kind of like – we have our own lingo for a bunch of stuff. And like it's a, it's a very niche sport and we all yeah. know each other. So like what's it like coming into that and like and – no, and there isn't much translating, right? Like nothing is like swinging a sword. So like – Nothing's <laughs> like it. Um, yeah, I, I – I can I think it's challenging, honestly. Um, and the hall is probably the best place. The hall and probably um, Warlord, is, as far as I know, are like the two places that are most established and structured. Like, and it was still hard to come in. I think to it because it is so niche. You don't know anything, right? Like, you ask all the stupid questions because there's no, you have no idea. Like, I literally just put a video out about like, don't buy armor when you start, because that was my first question. I was like, where do I get this? I want a helmet, right? Yeah. That was like the first thing I want. Like, and I even knew in my head, I'm not going to spend X amount of dollars, but like you wanted to know, like, and, and I was like, how much is it going to cost me? And like, instead of just saying, Hey, let me figure this out. Um, and I do, th and I know that like, I, there, I, I am sure and I've seen it happen. A lot of guys come through the door and are like, I want to do this. And they just don't. That's, right. That's, so, yeah. So it takes, you know, it takes the community a little while to accept new people sometimes. Um, I think we've gotten a lot better in the two years I've been here at the hall, especially as we broadened our scope from like the most hardcore fighting only to like battle days. It's like foam fight. It's like there's more soft kit fighting. There's more diversity. But when I showed up, it was steel fighting or nothing. Right. Um, and I, I, I know a lot of guys come in. Um, you know, I'm, I, you know, I look like a lot of dudes come in like, you know, lumberjack looking guy with tattoos going, I want to hit people. And like a lot of people just don't, they just fade, right. They don't really have the commitment for it. So like, I knew that coming in that I'd have to overcome that barrier. Right. Like, like I know what happened my first tournament. Like I've heard Brandon be like, well, the whole plan was to kick the crap out of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. He's like, all the vets were like, we're going to beat the shit out of the new guy. Cause like, like that. And I was like, <laughs> all right. 
I don't know. That 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 gets that gets hung up a little. That, I think that gets all hung up a little bit. Like yeah. sometimes you feel like that way, but they could have just said that. Like ah, we're gonna beat up the new guy, but it's not always like that. I think yeah. the 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 attrition rate that we yeah. have and people getting involved and then immediately leaving. I think a lot of the older heads that are like in leadership positions have like yeah. gotten wary of wait spending time and taking effort and putting that towards a new guy that's not going to be around in six months kind of thing and i, I totally think- get it but i don't even disagree with it right like no I neither do i that. yeah like i wanted to come in and be like it, I, I don't have to like i don't care if i win my first fights but like i want to hang and be like yeah i'm going to be able to roll with this right mm-hmm. like that was my goal um it's so like my first tournament my like and again that was the hardest one of the hardest things i've done ever because I have no idea of what, like, what, what, I literally got armor, like, a week before. What was your first Coming tournament? On. It was a longsword tournament. Um, my first fight was against Ken Fox. And that was the one where, because of the way, like, the brackets went, I had more fights than anyone that night, night. Because, like, I won my first couple, then went to the bottom bracket, then had to fight more, and then got to, like, the final. So it was just, like, I just fought all day. Yeah. Um, and, like... For me, I go, okay, like, that nearly killed me as a new guy who wasn't in shape yet, who never wore armor. But, like, my goal is, like, if I collapse, I'm going to collapse all the way. I'm just going to go as hard as I can and say that, hey, I want to be here. Like, that was important to me. Um, Like, one of the main things I've been putting out in most of my YouTube stuff is, like, you get out what you put in. And you yeah. really have to put in effort to do this shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it never gets easy, which is what I like yeah. about it, right? It ne- you're, I'm never going to be like, oh, today the armor feels light. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, yeah. everything else gets easier. The fighting is always going to be a, an uphill fight, and as you get yeah. as you get further into it and you learn more, you're a little bit more confident in your skills of doing stuff, which then makes fighting easier. Like, um, yeah, but like you'll go farther in a tournament, then, yeah. right? Like, yeah, like, you, 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 you get more like, oh, if, if I'm bad and I'm tired, I lose my first round. Well, that was I, that's it. I'm exhausted. And that's it. If I'm in shape yeah. and I'm doing better, all of a sudden I win fights. Now, guess what? I'm fighting longer, right? So it's never going to get easy, and that's what I like about it, right? I never get a day where I'm like, well, today's cake, yeah. right? Like, it, and it's it's the most challenging. I've done a lot of different sports, a lot of hobbies. It's the hardest one I've ever done, like bar none. What kind um, of sports have you done? So I played football in high school. Um, I played, I mountain biked a lot. Um, I did tournament paintball. I played basketball for years. I owned a nonprofit basketball camp. I've coached like 4,000 kids uh, mm-hmm. through it. Like, and, and I've done that. Um, I've played all different weird stuff, right? Like, I think paintball's pro- and I played like airsoft at like a relatively competitive level. I played with a bunch of guys who were on SWAT teams, mm-hmm. um, and like all that stuff's draining, but like nothing feels like the the adrenaline dump and the speed and like the the weight of armor fighting, right? There's um, no sport like it. There's there's no, no other sport like it that had like even for like taking video and framing wise, like, yeah. you can't you can't zoom in on things that are happening. This is what I said during that uh, talk with Steel Tiger Media. I'm like, look, look, you can't you can't you have to show the whole field because everybody on the field is able to make a play, and yeah. everybody's able to do something. Yeah, we have no focal um, point. No, we have no. Fo- there's no ball to follow. Um, Which has advantages and disadvantages for sure, but yeah, it definitely does. I <laughs> yeah. think, and I think that's a way that we can change that and have other objectives other than beating the shit yep. out of each other. Yep. Um, what are you bringing from? Like, do you do you feel like those prior like sport sports have brought more skills? Like, you have more of a skill base that you can pull from a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I think everyone brings different stuff to this, right? Like, I think that um, you know, if, if you've done any kind of athletic endeavors, right, mm-hmm. like it, you, you bring something to it. And my goal always is to figure out what I can pull from something else and put it in this into this job, this this sport, or like even my jobs. Like I do that between my different my work. Right? I'm saying, what can I take from here and learn about and use there? Mm-hmm. Um, I think for one thing I, I was better at initially than a lot of new people was field awareness. Yeah. Right. I need to be better at it now than I was, but like as a new guy. Having played basketball and knowing constantly, like I, I was a low post player, I was constantly wondering, like, where's the ball? And I had to have a feeling for it, even when I wasn't looking at it, right? Mm. And I kind of had that feeling when we started doing three on threes. Like, okay, like I'm in the corner, where are people? And I can kind of gauge that, like, based on how fast they're likely to move across that list, you know? Uh, so I think I came with that a little bit. Um, it's one of the hardest all, things to learn in steel yeah, fighting. Yeah, but again, I, I'll be honest, like, I developed it to like a level and I, I need to get a lot better. Like, I kind of like, it was like, Oh, I got it, and then that was. Then I haven't worked on it enough since. We're, it's been hard we're always, to we're always students, man. We're always yeah, always students. But I think that was an area that I took. I noticed early on that I, I felt more comfortable with. Yeah. Um, I think that um, and other things from sports. I'd say that I, that I took is 
Um, a lot of it honestly came from um, basketball. So as being a low post player, I was small. Like I'm six one, right? Like I'm the I was the smallest center in the state when I played basketball in high school, right? Like, so like most of the guys were you know your height, Paul, right? Like yeah. they were big, and my job was to push them around and position them and use my body to move them. Um, so I'm more comfortable with that. Like I don't ever worry in, in, a, in when I'm pushed up against a rail and I got a guy leaning against me or whatever. Like I'm comfortable in that space um because i like to use that guy to move and get him like i'll kind of put him in front of me and look around the list yeah and be like okay what am i doing okay now i'm gonna go now I'll throw him down or we'll move over here like i'm more comfortable in that area i think uh, um, and definitely with basketball being more adversarial like you you like doing man-to-man coverage usually you yeah. don't do a lot of zone stuff yeah um I think another correlation to that that you can pull from that is field manipulation. Like how I place my body on this list is how I'm going to make them react to my like my movement, yeah. and then I'm going to take advantage yeah. of it, or somebody on my team's going to take advantage of it. And I also think paintball translates decently for this uh, in, in yeah. tournament paintball because it's five v five. Yeah. Right. It's five guys on a field, and everyone has positions, and it's and it's very. I mean, it's it's somewhat similar to um, you know when you start a fight. The difference in paintball is like you all start on a box on each side and the buzzer goes and you run, but yeah. you run to your spot and you have to then read the field immediately. Right. Yeah. While the balls are coming at you with 10 balls a second. Right. So it's like, it's like you have to get to your spot and then go, okay, where are people? And I feel like that's kind of what the first engagement is. Uh, once that, you know, when you're standing there and you're gauging and all of a sudden, boom, it explodes yep. after that first hit. And you're trying to figure you're trying to figure out where are people. Right. And I find that like that kind of translate too is I'm thinking, okay, there's three guys on that side. They spun around here. Okay, I'm putting my back to the rail. I'm looking. Like, I, it feels similar to me to that. Um, so I think that awareness piece was probably something I had a little better than a lot of people who get really tunnel visioned when they start. And they just find a guy, lock on, and be like, this is who I'm fighting. Yeah. Um, and I think and I think the other thing about that is, like, we all know once the first hit happens, it turns into chaos. And you That's have chaos. to be able to adapt from that chaos kind of yeah. thing. And yeah. were you playing air ball or speed ball? Speed ball, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. that. that is, like, a hellish hectic situation oh, yeah. to walk in yeah you've got 10 people in the field and everyone's ball is going to shoot 10.2 <laughs> right? yeah it's ridiculous yeah so like it's and it's very fast paced and it's same it's the length of rounds is very similar like most rounds are 20 to 40 seconds yep right like they're just you know it's what a 5v5 fight really is a lot like it's very it's very fast explosive and then you got to recover reset and figure out what you're doing yeah. so i think that was a lot of that i liked Nice. Um, I wanted to ask. So you ha- you have a channel, and I wanted to ask yeah. why you started your channel and what you're kind of hoping to do with it. Sure. Yeah. So my channel is Woodchuck Knight. You can find it on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, I started it basically because I found this sport through a random YouTube video, like I said. And there's not a lot of content out there teaching people anything about it. There's a fair number of fighting videos, right? And a lot of them aren't in English, but you can watch people fight. And you can be like, oh, this guy's smashing it, and that's awesome. But I, I always go back to the fact that I'm very lucky to live near the Knights Hall. Mm-hmm. Right? I wouldn't be doing this if the hall wasn't near me. Yeah. Like, not, and, and I, and anyone who's fighting and training and is, doesn't have a school near them or a community, like, I am amazed that they do this. Right? Like, I just don't, I have, my life is too busy. That there wasn't a place that I could go, yep, I can go there two times a week or three times a week and just learn, I wouldn't do it, right? So I started doing that. One, um, like selfishly, I put a lot of the power work I do, and I you know, especially in COVID, I started this up, you know, but it's more active with COVID because we're doing nights hall online. I was like, well, I got to watch my videos anyway. Like, I got to record myself. Yeah. So I was record it and put it out there and say, like, here's some basic techniques. And my goal is to get new people the ability to learn fundamentals and train in a way that they could at home. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm very cautious with the videos I put out. I try not to put out anything that is beyond what I actually know. And I try to credit, you know, Jay or whoever taught me whenever I can at the hall because I don't want it to be like, I, I'm not an expert. Right. But I do know some of the basics and I'm just trying to make sure it gets out there. So mm-hmm. like, that's my big point. So a lot of the work is basic pelt work, you know, basic sword technique, how to hold a shield. Um, I do, you know, you know I, I put out a video. I actually had a, a, one of our recent guys, a, a Everett, who just had his first fight yesterday, right? He, he borrowed armor to, like, do, like, a demo fight. And I put out a video about fighter drop, like, how after that, like, your, your fight, you can get that, like, total drop and exhaustion. And he was like, thank you. He messaged me. He's like, I had no idea that was a thing until I watched your video. And then I experienced it. I knew what was happening to me. Mm-hmm. Right? And I was like, that. so I want those things that I've experienced to be like, okay, let me talk about them. 
And if I haven't experienced it, I don't share it, right? Like, I, that's that's where it's at right now. Yeah. I think that's- uh, and- Sorry. No, you go, Paul. No. You go. You go. I, and I think I think I think that's a great thing, like being able to show like the actual technique of like throwing axe shots, throwing sword shots, and stuff like that. Like I deal with a lot of like the the more ancillary crap of like finding gear, looking at armor, fixing your armor, that kind of stuff. Like yeah. all that other bullshit. Because I look at fighting, and I'm like, fighting's fighting. You're gonna work on your pal stuff. You're gonna do your workouts, or you're not. It's gonna be fighting. All the other yeah. things that worry you. I want to make that easier so you don't have to worry about it. And fighting yeah. can just be fighting for you. And I think that's a good space that for you and not me to do, right? Because, <laughs> like, frankly, like, I can do basic repairs. Like, I know how to do that. I probably should do videos on, like, Rivet. Like, you did a Rivet. I should probably do some stuff on that, too. But if like, people ask me, like, oh, can you go through all your armor? And I'm like, no. Because I don't know anything <laughs> about it. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm like, what's, you know, what helmet do you have? I'm like, I have the helmet that I have. I don't know. Like, I don't care about the equipment in the, like, in the way that, like, I am not an authenticity guy. I'm a sport guy. Yeah. Right? Like, I want my gear to be safe. I know it's safe because I had someone else who knows what they're doing look at it. Um, and I know it's good. And that's all I care about. So, like, I don't have, like, an in-depth, like, understanding of why this, you know, shoulder, you know, what my pauldron is designed. Like, I don't, I don't care. And like other people do, and that's awesome. So they need to put out that material, right? Like I care about teaching people fundamentals. That's what I like doing in general uh, for everything I've ever coached, right? I've ever taught to. So I go, okay, that's what I can do. Let me share that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shug from the chat wants to know, what is something in the armored content creation sphere you'd like to see more of? Like, what do you think besides what you're putting out? that we need to that needs to get done what other gaps exist just what i'm doing like it's <laughs> it, that's exactly what's needed i want everyone else. um I, I i honestly i think i think one thing we could do and you've done some of it i think fight video breakdowns are awesome right like i think like fight breakdowns are really important um i think that there should be more videos on team uh, strategy and team stuff for, for teams that don't have it. I was supposed and, to but, do that and, with Paul, and then I did But like, in, but like simple and short, <laughs> right? I think one of the problems is sometimes like those videos will be like, hey, I'll, you know, I, I like here's a two hour video. I go like, I'm not gonna have time to watch that, right? Like, yeah. like break. Like, I want almost like a lesson plan for that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the thing that we're still getting to. Like, we're not like I can literally go right now and be like, okay, how do I do a layup? And I can find a video on it, right? I can be like, all right, I want to learn three gun. How do I reload a pistol quickly? And I can find a video that will teach me that technique. Like we just don't have enough vocabulary in the sport and to like, and, and enough like basic foundational pieces that everyone can find it. I think right. that's the thing I'd like to see on the team level. And I'm trying to do that on the individual level. So, so speaking on that, um, a, one of the reasons that doesn't exist is we haven't really defined a lot of plays yet. Like, like, yes. like Paul said, it's such chaos that we haven't really got to the point of the sport where we're like, oh, we kn- this situation happens a thousand times. We all know what to do. It's kind of yeah. most of the people who know what to do just do it because we did it right. Like yep. we, so, so teaching that a coming up with the drills to teach that's going to be hard, and then B. Yeah. But also, I do have a couple of videos like that on my YouTube where I broke you do. down. You do. Ten minutes of one round. Yep. And yours, time. those are the ones that I love those. Like, those are awesome. I go, so, oh, yeah. like yeah. So I'll try to yeah. do more of those. And then, yeah. Paul, maybe that two-hour one we're going to do, let's not I think it, I think. I think it's really I think it's really just going to be me with a big whiteboard behind me and with yeah. X's and O's and drawing stuff yeah. around. Yo. Like, I'm going to uh, John Madden it up and go, here's a cheeseburger. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, yeah. go over here. They need Madden and be like, the key to football is Score a touchdown! <laughs> score a touchdown! Yeah, the guy who scores get... more points wins the game. Uh, like, you know, thanks, he, if if they go, if they yeah. make this point after, they're going to yeah. be one up in the score. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most madness they've ever heard, right? Yeah, um, but I do think I think that's an error. And even like, um, again, I'm coming like coming that paintball world. Like paintball is kind of a niche sport too, and there's some really good players, and there's some strategy. A lot of it's just like chaos to some degree. Yeah. But even then, like we, like you could watch like some of the top teams be like, here is what our practice looks like, and they would have plan, right? And I think that is a little more. And I know. Um, uh, someone's doing it. They put up their practice videos Kraken. and stuff. Sean Kraken. 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 Thank you. Yes, Check Kraken's out. doing it. Yeah. Check out New, yeah, Kraken. New Jersey Pine Barrens. Uh, yes. Is the, is the place. The word, It's a yeah. WordPress site. Check out his yeah. stuff. It's real. I'll good. have a video coming out. I actually did a full interview with him. How to how to just right. how to do your practice. How to like build yeah. your practice and run it. Um, and we talk about a lot of different drills yeah. that you can do in there. So I think he, the, I think the teamwork thing. 
um, for us and being able – like, you don't want to go, like, for set plays like you do in football no. and rugby and all that crap. I think it's more so building in, like – hey, if you're not getting somewhere with a guy and another one of your buddies is coming over to take him or you see an opportunity, switch dudes. You yeah. watch Partisan 1 do it. You watch Byrne do it. You watch uh, uh, White Company do it. Like They switch guys constantly to see who can get the better, uh, yeah. the better situation, um, putting yeah. that matchup on one another and taking advantage of the numbers game, the numbers game and how to manipulate the field and how to change the dynamic of the fight by putting yourself in a specific position to take multiple dudes. Like then you're making the numbers game four on three and everything yeah. else. Like, well, to answer, to answer what I want is way more people putting content out. Right. Cause I think the problem is you've got these niche, like I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Kraken did this one and Paul did it. And it's like so small we need the that if you're trying to find, back. What? We Bring the need, nightlife back. The, yeah. Need the nightlife. Back. Need the nightlife. But like, if you're coming <laughs> into the sport, and you're trying to find any of this. It's so hard, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's that. That's well, again. All, I'm, I'm like a small piece of it, so, but I'm trying to put out that there. Yeah. So two things for that. Like a bunch of people have said, we need to find some way of centralizing all this, and that's true as fuck. Um, I don't have a solution, so I'm not going to talk about that. But you yep. did bring up that you the language piece, right? And that's a huge yeah. problem is that we don't have a shared language. Um. A guy, uh, I want to work on that. A bunch of other people want to work on that. One of the places that we're going to try to work on that is ilovebohurt.com. There's a forum on there. So if you're interested in helping us standardize language, let's try to yeah. make that work. If it doesn't, we'll figure out somewhere else sure. to make that <laughs> work. Like, yeah. But like, that's, that's the thing we need to get, we need to get, um, that language standardized so that we can start having these. And like, Paul, you have a, had a great point about like, we don't, we're not going to have plays, but like what's what is our pick and roll what is our our soccer triangle yeah. right like, yeah there are momentary plays that happen in lots of other uh sports that we and like we have those things we just haven't defined them yet yeah. that's the thing like they exist and like you can I, you can even sometimes point them out um one a good example i saw the la guys the la golden horde is it the golden horde one of the la teams uh, Golden Knights, I think. Uh, Golden Knights, I think. Yeah, what they uh, they what they do is like they'll send two guys to check one dude, so two dudes hit the guy at the same time, and like generally, no matter how fucking big you are, if two fucking motherfuckers are running you down in armor and they both get that good explosion, you're probably going off your ass. Um, generally, yeah. So like yeah. little things like that are what we need to put together, but yeah. anyway. Um, oh, and the nightlife needs to come back. Sure. Yeah, I agree with yeah, that. It definitely does. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to see more of Suge with those giant gauntlets on his hands when he's doing his <laughs> videos. Uh, so, in the time you've been doing, in the two years, have you? Do you yeah. think you've seen the sport grow regionally, or nationally, or even internationally? Uh, That's a. Re I, I think it's a hard question because I think I don't know what I didn't know. I think so. Yeah. Like for, I mean, I guess again, the whole COVID thing blows us all up, right? Because like when I was new, like, like my entire world was the hall, right? We had three teams right at the hall plus the new hate, hate like that was it. It's all you need to know about, right? Like, and then you know I started training, doing some stuff with the executioners on the occasion. I was like, oh, there's other fights I could go place. Like so, I've kind of I'm kind of still learning the world. Uh, and learning all the, the you know heavy hitters and whatever, but like I do think I've seen the the Armored Combat Sports page in particular has grown. I've seen more teams popping up. I've seen more people talking about stuff, new new people like, coming in. I do think it's growing, which is a really good thing considering the fact it's really hard to grow in an environment where people can't consistently train together. Right, we're a year now sitting in our houses, and I still see people coming into this and trying it. Right, so I do think it's growing. Um, like I you know I I was wanted to fight overseas we didn't get a chance to because all the stuff that happened like I, I haven't had a chance yet like but in the end to me that's like gravy right like i'm much more focused on the u.s market than anything else right like i think there's so much room for growth here that i want to see us get more organized and better and have like it's awesome to go fight i like, guess a huge adventure and i get that sports established over there and stuff like that but like until you can have your own country doing it at a high level like consistently like i don't everything else is just extra to me uh competition breeds excellence kind of thing yeah yeah um and i think and i think the other thing is like there was a there was there's a guy asher who's putting out these um 
these uh, questionnaires, these polls, and he's asking questions and everything else. Like Motherfucker good- stole my fucking thing. Ash, I'm coming for you. I mean, you, guess what? You heard it here. <laughs> guess what? He doesn't have as many irons in the fire, so it's easier for him to do yeah, it every week. I know. Right? Um, <laughs> delegate the workout. Stole, stole but, my thing. I did delegate, and he went and stole it right from under me. I'm coming for you, Ash. Um, no, Ash is doing but great one, stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> but one thing that was brought up on one of his things is like, look, um, 90% of the populace in the United States doing steel fighting is not going to go over to Yeah. Like it's not, they're yeah. not the plan. It's not the, what they're going to do. Um, and I've talked about it with different people, like on live streams and just chatting in general um, about like how we can change our meta to be more like we can do other scenarios. We can do other things kind of stuff. And I think that'll help us grow as well. Cause it'll give us, it'll give it something more than just, Oh, go beat the shit out of a guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I totally agree. I want to, I, I like doing more fun stuff. Um, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad, my data says 50%, but, uh, uh, and, slightly more responding yeah. so what's up yep. <laughs> but um yeah no like the thing talking about that I, we need to bring chapter matches back we need chapter yeah. matches um because that's that's the american model of sport right we we think of teams that fight each other um and so i don't know i i think that's how how it ne- what we need to do we need to get away from this this giant tourney model which also like it's hard to travel across the u.s let alone travel to other yeah. countries yeah like so, so that's anything that's why i'm pushing um back to chuck though <laughs> sure <laughs> um, i thought about anything yeah what so what was the easiest transition like for you like into armor like what was the easiest bit about the sport you were like oh shit i got this <laughs> Oh, easiest part. I don't know, man. Anything easy. Um. So, so I have very little fight experience before this. Like, I've done a little bit of karate stuff when I was a kid. I've done a little bit of boxing stuff, but like never like competitive. I've never done any wrestling. Um, I mean, not, not even competitive. I mean, like a little bit of boxing. Like, learned how to throw punches and like did some. You know, not even like fights. And I think for me, like. The, the appeal of the sport to me was that there aren't a lot of rules, right? Like I never wanted to box because when I, when it got serious, I wanted to kick the guy, right? Like, or like when you know, I wanted, or, or like, I never wanted to, to like, you know, or I wanted to wrestle him and I couldn't, I didn't want to wrestle because when I get when I, when it gets close, I want to punch him in the face, right? Like I wanted to, if I want to do a fighting sport, I wanted to have the ability to do whatever I wanted. Right. And that's what appealed to me about this. When I came in, I was like, Oh, I can swing as hard as I want at someone. (laughs) Like I really can. And like, and like, I've never been able to do a combat sport where of any kind, even goof where I didn't have to hold back. Right. Like, because like you, you know, I sparred, I did um, Pankratian, which is like Greek um, martial arts. um, And it's sparring with that, but like you have to pull your punches because you don't want to like kill a guy. Because like the, the equipment doesn't keep it that way, right? Or if I if I did MMA, I have to go to work with a busted up face the next day, and like I can't do that, right? Like so, like it never appealed to me. And the idea that I could get in armor, fight a guy as hard as I want, do whatever I want, hit him with a weapon, and then we can be buddies afterward, and I can go to work the next day it was like why? I, so like this was good. So one of the things I didn't have a, a trouble with, like some people do, is like I had no problem swinging hard, right? Like when I got the chance to hit a dude with an axe, I was like finally. Yeah. Right, like this is amazing. This right, is like I've I can wanted. just do this. Yeah, <laughs> all I want. Like I get to, yeah, you know, like I get to really swing this. Like, um, so I think that to me was like the 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 easier transitions. Like once I got to go, I was like, I'm gonna go as hard as I can. And like the thing I'm working on actually is regulating because I'm really bad at that. Like I'll just like go full speed and then be like, I'm tired. Right, like so. <laughs> um, like I've I've been working on that, but I think that was an easy thing. And I think that um. If I had to talk, and I've said this, if I have to, if, if you're a new fighter, I think you should w- learn sword and shield before anything else. And we train that at the hall, right? We train that at the hall. And everyone says, like, don't fight with axes right away. And I was like, that's the advice I have. And I still ignored it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I completely ignored it, right? Um, but I think I did have a little bit of advantage in that, like, I grew up using an axe. Like, I've cut down, tr- I've, l- l- I've done, like, f- cleared land. I've, like, chopped wood like i've used an axe all consistently so like i came in i was like oh this feels pretty normal to me right like i am like and again i'm going to give my secret here. i'm a lefty so yeah. like yeah I'm a le- so like i do everything in my life left-handed except an axe i'm ambidextrous with oh. 
because I'm cutting down trees and I'm swinging and like I'm just I'm cutting both sides consistently. Right. I'm chopping wood. I've always been doing that. So like I came in, I was like, oh, this feels like it belongs in my hand. Um, now transitioning and checking and grappling, I had to learn all that, but like the first time I got to really swing and like tee up on someone. Um, yeah, I, that was like the best thing. And I'm very sorry, Mangler. Um, but like that was, yeah. Yeah. It's so, like, that was the first, my first chapter match, right? Like that I, I got, I got mangled by Mangler the very first time because that was my first, the first round I ever had. Greg's advice was you know, Greg, Greg Fisher, my captain was like, okay, you don't go down. And I was like, okay, Greg says, don't go down. So Got like, get, yeah, that's it. That's all I cared about. So like, man, I got me in the corner, just crushed my head. And I just like pulled my neck by being like, no, I'm not going down. And like, didn't have any technique, didn't duck up underneath it. Just like literally laid there. I was like, I'm not going to do it. But then later on in the fight, I got to tee off from Angle's ribs. And I was like, yes, <laughs> it was great. And I was like, it's, you know, he hit him. He went down. I felt great. And, like those moments are awesome. Um, Brandon is saying, uh, swing on me, bro. March 6th, let's go. I think yeah. he's challenged you to an axe fight. Yeah, well, what Brandon doesn't realize is he challenged everyone named Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, he challenged the Chuck army, which is anyone named Chuck. So, like, I'm going to – I keep telling him, Ballas is coming out from behind him. He doesn't believe me, but it's happening, <laughs> right? Like, and it's not even – it's a chair. He's going to come out with a chair. <laughs> um, no, like, yeah, so Brandon and I have a fight coming up the six. We don't know what we're doing yet. Um, so I said, Axe oh, fight. Ever. Axe fight. Oh, Axe fight. Yeah. Oh, Axe, Axe fight. fight. We, we actually thought about doing your new, uh, your new dual rules. Ooh, that'd be cool. I'll so I back. think we might try yeah, that, too. That. If we, go to, we might do a tag team match. I have no idea what's going on. So, um, but yeah, so we're fighting on the, on the six. Um, yeah. Uh, sweet. Yeah. Um, so back to transitions. What was the hardest thing? Uh, if if he if killing yeah. a motherfucker was the easiest, what's yeah, the that hardest? that was. Um, I think the hardest thing I, um, hardest thing. A lot of hard things. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the grit was is is hard. Like the idea of like getting back in there was hard, right? Like that first couple tournaments. Like I, like I, you know, I've seen the video of it. Like where I finished around and because i lost i went in like the loser bracket and i had to fight immediately afterward and i'm walking out of the ring and someone grabbed me and turned me around it was like go back in there <laughs> and like i'm dragging the sword like in my head like i can't do this like like that has been the hardest and like getting past that point of like i cannot do it and doing it anyway um fighting injured in reno was hard um because i got i got a shot to the back that like just spasmed my whole back uh and that in the next day was chat. That was one of the harder days too. Um, but I think technique wise, I think the hardest thing, it took me a while to learn to grapple um, in any, any meaningful way. Um, <laughs> I had decent feet as a new guy. Like I was good at not going to the ground um, for a new person. Um, they said this sport plays a lot of my strengths. Like I'm not a guy who jumps and moves around a lot, but I have very, I'm very stable. So like I could just hold people in place, but I would just tend to do that a lot. And it took me a while, like even simple things like head control. I was like just bear hug guy. And like, that was it. Right. <laughs> Versus like, Oh, I should get my hands up here and pull his head down. Like that stuff took beep, me a while and beep. I'm still getting better at it. Yeah. Be big, um, be I think strong. that was my hardest. <laughs> yeah. Be big, be strong. Doesn't always work. Yeah. Like be yeah. big, be strong. It like works for a while. Um, doesn't work when it's cat. <laughs> like, <laughs> doesn't work against certain people. There's usually um, someone bigger and stronger. <laughs> yeah, there is one thing. So technique is going to be it. Um, I do think you can out grit a lot of people. You mm -hmm. ain't wrong. I think that's an area. I think that's a skill more than a, a natural ability. I think you can develop that and be like, I'm not going to quit on this. Yeah. Um, but I think that that um, that grappling was really really tough for me. Yeah. Um, the yeah. tough and the tough and people out thing. I also think that has to do with new guys. A lot of new guys don't realize that like. Yes, the sport's very intense, but things are going to hurt. But they're not yeah. going to hurt for long. They're very, they're very yeah. fleeting. Yeah. I watch, I watch guys. Like I went to an ACW fight and I fought at uh, Tidewater, Tidewater Dogs of War down there in Tidewater, Virginia. Yeah. Uh, Tulsa came out, and there we were having a hard time keeping guys on the list. And I was like, "Hey, y'all are just in a little bit of pain. It's okay." Yeah rest up you can go into the next fight you are not made of glass and that is a yeah. thing that i find like you build that confidence over time like oh i've been hit by dudes i've been i've taken big shots and i'm still living yeah um and you can step in and do another fight 
Yeah. Uh, I've had multiple moments where I'm like exhausted, blown up. I'm like I'm fighting injured and everything else like that. I'm like, I can't go another round. And I go, yeah, yeah I can. Fuck that. Yep. I, can do, I can do another round. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's what I love about chapter matches is that like, it's just a grit fest. It just, like, yes, it's, can you get back out there? Um, and that builds yeah. that, um, also satisfaction matches. I don't know if either of you have ever done those. I haven't done a satisfaction match. Paul, you ever do one? What? Satisfaction, satisfaction you, match? You fight till both people are satisfied? <laughs> uh, not in steel, but in retain. Yes. All right. All right. Um, I've, I've I've had several personal issues I've worked out with <laughs> fists, fists and sticks. Um, I'll tell you something else I, I do struggle with a little bit, and this is just my own mentality. Is I have a, and again, it's why I'm not as huge a fan of like the big tourney events and things like that. Is like I like to mentally prepare for the event that I'm going into and be at my best for it. And I have a hard time going out and signing up for like a sword and shield tournament and then a melee, right? I have a hard time going like like I I find those to be very different sports and very different approaches and the only thing that's in common is i happen to be in armor in both of them so like i like it, it's hard for me to go so like when i go we went to like the arena i was like i didn't sign up for stuff i just did our team fights right because like mm-hmm. my big thing is like i don't want to let the team down right like i, I don't want to be again as the newest guy in the team too i don't want to be the guy who's like oh yeah i'm tired now and I, i'm not at my best because i fought a, 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 a different event like for me like the melee is why i went and if I went for duels, I would go for just the duels or whatever. Like that's a thing that I, that's a personal thing. That just is the way I am. Yeah. That's I, I, there's not a, I have yet to figure out what the good solution is. Cause we can't just have separate events the whole time. Oh, you can't. Cause, cause there's just not enough vacations, not enough travel. But yeah. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. blame for doing it. I'm just saying as a personal, like that's, no, I hear you. again, I find chapter matches different because the, the duels are part, part of the of match it's and so- like in the points matter to them. So like, I'm not, if I go out there and I go, if I burn myself out in a duel, but I get three points, like, and I don't fight as well in the melee, I didn't hurt the team. I helped the team because I went and got points. Right, exactly, and, I, and that's just the, that's my. I'm very team based. Like that's my personality. Is like I want to. I don't want to let people down. Like that was my yeah. first year of fighting. Like my first year was don't let people down. <laughs> don't. Like, that was up. my entire. Like I don't want to care. I just don't want to be the guy who lets people down. Nice. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a huge part of like being on your team. Is like yeah, I'm gonna do this so that like so he's okay, so that he's safe yeah. or whatever. So, so yeah, I'm yeah, glad that that was there. Um. What did we fuck up on when we brought you in? Like, what <laughs> what should have we done oh. better to not use shitty language? But good question. Um, yeah, I not I I don't think a lot. Like, I think that the 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 night fit program is fantastic, right? Like the tabot, like the workouts are great. Um, I do think, and we talked before, clarification on like, because the the ambigu- the ambiguity of who is an expert and who know who's just a you know guy showing up like as a new person you don't have an idea i had an advantage because this, the night fight tv show came out right so i'd be like oh that guy was on tv therefore <laughs> he at least is good enough to be on tv right like like that helped legitimately helped me it's like oh i gotta be like here's the five guys at the gym that i should listen to yeah. right versus xyz guy who like, doesn't know what he's doing yet and i have no idea and i'm starting to start taking advice right um we were doing originally, we had the night, we had the, the night fits where you had like the regular night fit and you had like the heavy weight workout side of it. We were like doing the bags lifting and stuff. And like, I didn't know if I was allowed to go over there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't know you weren't it, supposed to. And then like somehow you did and then everything changed. <laughs> yeah. But that was the point. It's like, there was no guy like Brandon was like, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, I do. But like, I didn't know if that was like, what was like, what is what? Right. And I think that kind of, yeah. Like ambiguity. Even now we're better. At least with the classes, they're listed as what they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So like I would be there was a couple times where after some class, um, you, Brandon, and someone else were hanging around doing like trip techniques and stuff like that, right? And I was like, What well, I want to know what that is. And I didn't realize those were executioners oh. at a practice. Like, I didn't know what it was, right? Yeah, so yeah, I was like, yeah. Why can't I go do that? Like I just want to be good at this. Yeah. Um so again, I don't want like a karate belt system, right? <laughs> I mean, but like, I do think there's, yeah, there, but like, yeah. maybe that's what we have to do though, because right, like, yeah. n- l- not even just the hall, like the sport in general, right? Like, how do I, yeah. how do, you, how does anyone who hasn't from the hall know that I know anything about what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Um. 
You know, like uh, I have dude, this I found channel, the, but like that's yeah, it. The hoods, the hoods on the were on the Knights Hall Knights page, right? Yeah. Like on the Knights Hall page, the old the old website. It was like there was a picture, I think, of Lane getting hooded, right, yeah, as far yeah, as an executioner. And I was like, I want that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to, and I still don't know how to get it. But I was like, I want that, right? You so just like that stuff fight good. <laughs> yeah, but like that's what. But my point is like that stuff motivates me personally. Is like I I can be self motivated. But I know a lot of people will be like, if I don't understand it, I'm gonna go away, right? Yeah. And right. like I think there's like like I, I I always look at like my personality isn't the universal personality. So what makes people leave or what makes not understand what we're about? And I think it's that, right? I think a lot of it is that is like who do I listen to if I'm a new guy coming in? Like who has an idea of what's happening? Right. I, I, and so yeah. like. I, there's definitely like some people are popping off in the chat, like Josh and Julie saying no, no on this, no on the belts. And I've heard a bunch of people. I used to be very against belts, and I and like I don't want to see a cookie system come in place where like no. where you have the fucking karate school. You go in, you get your white belt. A year later, you have your green belt. I don't know the fucking rank. Whatever it is. But yeah, like you white, just, yellow, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and then you get your black belt, but you don't actually know anything. Um, yeah. No, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want belts. I'll actually tell you, like I, I told you, I did karate as a kid. In my very first time sparring, I was a white belt. I sparred a black belt. And I knocked them out. <laughs> <laughs> because at my school, as a white belt, you were supposed to like this no contact sparring where you like go slow and you get points by getting me in range. And yeah. black belts could do full contact. That dude just roundhouse punched me, like backhanded me in the head. And I was like, what is this? Dovon just started punching him. <laughs> and I was like, again, like that was like little kid karate. Like I was like 14. Like, like that is not helpful. I don't want belts, but I do think something between like, if you have an established school and you have teachers and instructors, you have those people. But even then, and again, we're better now. When I first started, I'd have a guy who was in class with me and next week he's teaching class. And like, I didn't know the difference. Like, why is it, you know? And I think that idea of like, these are our instructors. The and then like something saying you're on this team even right like yeah. an executioner gets that like you're on you've qualified for X like I I'm fine with some basic differentiation because as you come into a place that's so niche you have no idea yeah it, it's def um, there's definitely like how do you how do you tell who who knows what the fuck they're talking about like yeah in in my G BJJ thing. I go to a school and like, I know not to listen to like any of the white belts. And I yeah. know that like a blue belt, maybe, but basically as it goes up, you give them a slightly more. The thing is though, like we don't want to make it so that you just listen to the experts and that you're not. Cause like everyone should be questioned, right? The Bruce yes. Lee thing, take everything, throw away that doesn't work. I, and like Josh talking about how it's, a, how it creates a very toxic environment. And there's some truth to that. It does. It, it, and like it's particularly in in the in the two level system like in like i know paul you're in some fucking some night sports um sports that have knights and everyone else and like that gets so political and shitty that's that's yeah, and most of those are more like of a social situation that's more right. of a social like they have yeah. fighting requirements but they also it also requires a whole social situation that goes along with it does it though? so he, here's here's my <laughs> answer though if, that, if that's your problem get better people yeah. Um, like, if that's your problem, get better people. Like, if you think, can't have your top people at a school knowing that my job is to help other people get better, then, like, I, you know, like, if I came in and the Knights Hall community was like that, I would have pieced out immediately. Right. Like, I've joined that. I, like I said, I've, I played tournament paintball. I was on a paintball team that was like that for a little bit. Right. And it was garbage. Like, it was garbage. You had, like, the top A team that had, like, their fancy jerseys and they were like, oh, I got my jersey there for. Right. And like that to me is going like, no, that's not, you know, this, you've got to then go out and prove it. You got to show it. And that's true. But, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying like you got to have, have a black belt there for I'm listening to, but something is, like we do it like we do the brawler challenge thing at night, like at, at the battle day, it's a little patch you get. If you do the brawler, like you get in that pit for five minutes and get punched around a bunch. Um, but like that, you know, those people that we picked and say, Hey, they're ready for that. Right. Yeah. Um, little things like, you know, if you're, you know, just saying like these are like there's got to be some way that as new people you can come into a community of 50 60 people and say like who's new here while my and, and, and if there's a di two different classes why are they different yeah Bra right like it, yeah brandon just brought up the point he doesn't like to talk other people do and that makes him less important sometimes but like at the hall he if you want axe advice that's the guy i mean yeah, Jay, that's the guy jay's the Jay. guy but like yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you know yeah. jay because he's the head instructor right like yeah 
And like that's the thing. Like I like also I'm no longer an instructor. Does that mean no one should fucking come to me or I shouldn't go to people? Um Do you want an honest answer to that? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just joking. No, no, obviously, like, yeah, but you've done all you've done the like again, it's that whole thing, like deeds not word thing. Like who's done the deeds? It's an arbitrary thing to that? try and figure out, man. It's really arbitrary. And yeah. there are guys in the sport that have been around for five years, done a bunch of national events, but they're still at the same level they were when they started. And that's not saying anything about them. They're out there to do it as a hobby kind of thing. And then there's dudes that like spend a lot of time like working on it and doing the yeah. thing and training and all that but, shit. And again, I'm talking for the new guy, yeah, right? Because yeah. like, if you're that guy who's been in the hobby for five years and you haven't improved, right? I'm going to fight you and beat you eventually. <laughs> And mm-hmm. then I don't have to worry. I'm talking like when you're new and like you're there for your first three, four, five, six months and you don't have armor, you're not in kit, right? You're just trying to train yeah. and you've got a school that's like ours where it's it's big enough that you have people turning in and out, right? I mean, not mm-hmm. not like, even just the school, right? Like, like you brought up, a lot of people don't have the school. So you, yeah. have, so you pop online and you ask a question and you get yeah. a million answers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, and like, you can't even uh, go who, like we used to have a white belt system of yeah. if you've been overseas you got a white belt but like there's cats with white belts who like new fighters are better than yeah Just, of course like, yeah. first day fighters and again <laughs> this is like we're going in a rabbit hole like, it's not like a big thing i'm super passionate about it's just a thing that i noticed when i was new is yeah. that like for the first few months okay. i was like it's really hard to figure out where i'm allowed to go and what i can do yeah like we right we, you don't have a solution, but the problem no, is it's not, we don't the know. Is that, yeah. We don't know who to go to, and so that's. I'll the thing. boil I, it. I'll boil it down. I'll boil it down to one thing. Opinions yeah. are like assholes. Everyone's got one. Yeah. Like, I, everyone's yeah. gonna talk their fucking head off. Um, and I, I have. It, it is what it is. Though. Yeah, and yeah, I try. No. Like I said, I consider two myself assholes? relatively humble, and I think I'm like I'm okay at this sport. Like I'm okay at it. Like for a new guy, I'm okay. I'm doing well. I'm trying my best, right? I don't think I'm like this world fighter great. I'm, I'm not, right? But I do know I came in and like within a few months, there were other people who were, you know, who were, who were learning too. And I would, I jumped them. Like I, I mean, I'm fighting the executioners. That's a fact, right? Like not knowing where I could like go train to another, that other, that other the group of people or why I was there was like, that was, was hard. Right. And that's, that's the one thing I say new that was like kind of confusing. Yeah. So, I think that if I didn't feel so passionate about this, I could have been like, yeah, I'll do something else. Yeah. Right. right? And I think. Yeah. So for the hall in that's particular, it. that's an easy that's an easy fix. So like hope and like I think they're on that. So like it's way better now. It's so, way better now. So right? hopefully they continue that that work of like separating yeah. classes and why they're separate and yeah. why people are there. But like I don't know how we solve it in the greater community. But we're doing even better with now with the hall because each class is defined, right? There's striking class, there's Tabata class, there's like so I like I would show up and it'd be like, what am I doing today and why? Because it was just there were three classes uh, uh, during this day, right? And like that ability to learn and be like, oh, I need to get better at this. I can show up to that class. Yeah, perfect. Is is helpful on its own. Like you get to, to, to kind of have that feeling. All right. What uh, what do we do right? And like try to narrow it to like up like the thing we okay. did the <laughs> most right. Yeah. What did you write? Uh, fundamentals, right? right? Like fundamentals and not moving too fast, right? Like that was I think the the best thing is like I was there and I had to do the same, pell work every day after class for a long time. Like the same, like onside, 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 offside, onside, and that was it, right? Like that I think was, and that was one of the things that kept me, because like I said, I've done a little bit of small martial arts here and stuff, and a lot of it is just, like a lot of the places I went were just not great, right? Mm-hmm. It was all flash and no, you know, you know, substance. And here I was like, okay, they're not gonna teach me the cool things because I'm not good enough for that yet. And that's the way it should be. Right? Learning, like, learning, learning the base. If you learn the basics yeah. and build muscle memory of yep. the basics, then you do them. You do them without a second thought during yeah. the fight. Then you can add in the fancy yep. shit. I like that a lot. I like the fact that it was very much like you need to learn this. Here's footwork. You have to learn the stance. You know, yep. like you have to learn how to swing the sword. You have to do this. Otherwise, you're just flailing, which you can go do for a while. But you won't be good. If you want to be good, this is, and we're teaching sword skills here. We're teaching fighting skills. We're not teaching just everybody brawl on a pit. And I like that a lot. Um, two things. Uh, Tiger Shady from uh, – so that's Chris who runs uh, Steel Media, which will hopefully yeah. super improve our – Yeah, I'm our, very excited about that. Yeah. Um, we're all looking forward to that, Chris. Anyway, he said it was super cool seeing your growth in sword skills after watching you do a few months. So very much he'll, he's in for that. And work and the work on your channel. Um, Shug says, 
and specifically Chuck, he was talking about the us, us having we a need for team coaches, um, and we might be seeing that. And specifically Chuck, you have a mentality that I see a lot where if you don't fight, I won't listen. Would a non-fighting coach be helpful, slash, would you respect their teaching, slash, plays? If you don't fight, I won't listen. Um, I think he's saying that's what he sees in you. I don't know if that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm thinking about this. It's a good question. I, I, I think right now in the sport, yeah. I don't think that's if, and I think a lot of other sports don't have that, right? Like you know, my basketball coaches weren't playing active coaching with me, right? I don't, but but again, most of them grew up in the sport. The sport was established, and they grew up learning about it, and they studied play. Like the best coaches that I've had weren't the best players, right? But this sport's still niche and unique enough that if you haven't put time in, how do you really know what to do, right? Like we don't have enough data. Like I can go get a book on plays, and I can literally run a triangle offense having never played basketball. I could teach myself that if I wanted to, right? Like I still think you've probably played some. You got to understand the, the mechanics of it, but like this, we don't have enough yet. Now, does it mean you have to be an active fighter? No, right? Like I think if you've done the time and you've and and, and again, if you've done like, hey, I've got those fundamentals, and now you've gone and you've dedicated yourself to coaching and learning how to develop and teach, like we probably need more of that, right? Like I, I'm going to listen to the people who are giving me good advice. Um, and I'm going to listen to people who come with an attitude of, I want to make you better. Um, when I was talking about training, it was like people you know, at the hall saying like, here's how you do sort of stuff. And I go like, well, I'm getting one guy saying this, one guy saying this, who do I believe? Cause I don't know who the expert is yet. Right. Um, but as far as coaching, no, I think, I think non-fighting I guess clarification of Shug is like, are these guys current fighters who are not fighting now because they're coaching this event? Like, that's awesome. Right. And if you're a former fighter or not fighting currently for injury or health or whatever, like I'll probably coach someday. Like I'm not going to be in the sport forever. Like I said, I, I can't do this if for the rest of my life. Eventually I'm going to break. Yeah. Right. So like then I'll probably coach and teach because I like doing that. Uh, Paul, you want to take a shot at that? Do you have a, do you agree a hundred percent? Do you have any difference of opinion? Um, to have a coach that is telling you things, you have to see deeds, not words. Um, you have to see the work that goes into building that knowledge to be able to tell me how I should be fighting. Does that make sense? Um, like, if if I'm gonna have it, like, I if they're like a prior fighter and they they're doing more research, they're looking at tape, they're like doing they're doing all this stuff, and they come to me with a playbook, and I'll be like, yes you uh, i'm perfectly good with it like if if we talk about it beforehand usually if somebody says they want to come up and coach me i'm like okay then you need to um you need to talk to me beforehand so i actually like get context of where you're coming from kind of thing um contextualizing like a non-fighting coach i'd like to see them like be as involved as i am as a fighter if they're going to be that way i want them to be that way as a coach as well uh, there are probably people who who are do who have done enough around lists and events, and like been around enough, and like they're not and like they're helping out all the time that they probably could coach. I just think it's a minority versus the average. Like, I, I would think that's an exception right now because the because the world's so small, yeah. right? Like that's where it's at right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a slightly different take. Um, cl a little closer to Paul's about putting in the work, but like I don't even need him to put in the work in the sport. Um, I I would grab a boxing coach who, as long as they were willing to say, and this is a, not a thing I think new fighters can do, and I don't think any new team could do, right? So I think this could work for, for teams or fighters. But, like, we could grab a football coach and say, hey, you've done plays. Can you run our Can you run our team and design plays for us and just trust us when we tell you that won't work? Um, and, like, you – and be actively involved. And similarly, like – I'll grab a boxing or striking coach, and if they're like, hey, I can teach you striking, and I can help you work on your thing, but I need you to help guide me in what to learn because you have that base knowledge. And so so I think there is a space for it, but it's only for the people who've been doing this like and doing it like hard and putting in the time for at least two years, maybe three or four. Um, like I don't know that I would feel comfortable with it two years ago. Um, now I do. But uh, but also that's with a little bit of more knowledge of other sports. Um, so anyway, that good question. 
Yeah. Um, I got a couple more. Uh, what what did you do right? Like, what's one thing you think you did real good on your way up? Oh, um, I think I came with an attitude to learn, right? I think that's honestly, like, I came understanding that, like, I don't know anything about this and to listen to people and trust them and do what I'm told. Um, and is it always, again, I, again, I, I, from a real job, job of man, I manage people, right? That's what I've done in multiple different industries. And I tell my guys all the time, like, I'm going to be right 90% of the time about about the stuff, right? Like, I, if it comes to general coaching and, like, fundamentals of your job, like, if you're a new person, you come in, I'm going to be right 90% of the time. 10% of the time, of the time I'm going to be wrong, right? But that's a good average, right? <laughs> so, like, I trust that 90% of the time that, that when I come to the hall, like, I'm learning the right stuff. And there were some – we all learned. We were developing sport. We said, oh, that play doesn't – that didn't work, Right. But like, I don't think it's worth my effort. Like I see people sometimes be like, well, that didn't work. Therefore, I don't trust this X, Y, Z. And I go, you know what? Like, that's not your place. Like, I my job is to be a fighter when I'm fighting. And my job is to listen to the people who are better than me and sometimes and, and trust them. And if if it turns out they're not going to get my have my back and literally in the sport, if they don't have my back, Right. I'll learn that quick enough and I'll be like, this isn't the right team or right sport or whatever. Yeah. So I came in, I, I think, with a relatively humble attitude of like my job was to be as good as I could be. And when I'm out there for my team to be the best I can and trust my team. And like, that's, I think, what I did. Right. Um, and also don't back down from stuff. Right. Like, d- like, don't back down. Like, if you're going to go out there and fight, go fight. Yeah, like, talk. if you're going to go out there, like, don't do not. If, you, if you're on a team, you show up for your team. Like that, I, and I will, I will like preach about the fact. It drives me crazy when people say like, "I want to be in a team," and they don't put in the work. No, you know, you don't have to be a national level fighter. You don't have to be on a regional team. But if you're on a local team, show up, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like fight. And I don't care if you lose. I don't care if you get knocked down immediately. <laughs> I care that you got your ass in there and you didn't fail on the people who said who were relying on you, right? Um, and I think that's like. That you know, like I, I will flat out tell you, the first time I lined up against the Monarchs, and it was like Cat, Richie, and um, and Al, I didn't want to be there. <laughs> right? Ooh. Like I didn't want to be in that fight. I wanted to go home. <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, I don't. I'm brand. This is my second match, like my second chapter match, right? Like, like I literally went home that day with like, my. It looked like I was growing angel wings out of the back of my shoulder blades because just bruises all down it from Al's axe, just chopping the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was like, but like, don't like, this is not a sport to be a baby. And that's, there's plenty of other sports where you can be, it can be more finesse. And again, I'm not talking about duels, talking about melee, like duels are obviously exhausting for different reasons. But like, if you're going to get in a sport where you say, I'm going to swing an ax at another dude, he's going to swing that ax at you and get in there. And I, I, I can't stand that. That's like my number one thing. And I think that I went in there saying like, I'm here to show up. And if I said, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Right. If I say I'm going to fight for my team, I'm going to fight for my team. And some days I'm my, my best, some days I'm my worst, and whatever. But like, show up. Paul, yeah. Paul what's your line? Uh, get vicious or get the fuck out. Yeah. Like, you need to, you need to get some great in your curl to actually really yeah. do this sport and be successful at it. And you need to show up. That's the biggest thing. And this, we've talked about like, you had a whole thing about like recreational fighters versus like, you know, semi. Like not professional, but like committed and like you know beer, beer league, whatever beer league, phrase. Beer league versus uh versus yeah. the the hardcore. Whatever yeah. phrase you want, right? Like I don't, I, I. This sport needs to grow. We need to have plenty more beer league. We need to have guys do it for fun, and that's fine. But there will never be a version of this sport where it's lazy, right? This is not. There's other sports for that. Uh, yeah. I, I had Beth on something. We were talking. It might have been this stream even. Um, yeah. And she's like. Uh, if you don't want like to put in the work, go do HEMA. And like, I won't say that, but I'll quote her saying it because she actually does HEMA. Yeah. <laughs> but like, let this is not there's there's a there's a lower end to this, but the lower end is a fucking extreme sport. That's I think that's the point. It's like this is an extreme sport. You can't not like be extreme at some in this sport. Like it's the most violent of the weapon sports I know about that isn't shooting people. Right. Like, like you, like you need, like, and that's it. Like, and that's okay. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So even like I've never had I've never had a fight where I got out of it and I was like, that was easy. But yeah. ever didn't matter if I won every round or if I lost every round or if it was a du- like it's always going to be hard and that's what this is. Yeah. Um. So when you fuck up. <laughs> you said when oh we my, fucked up. When did you yeah, fuck my up? Yeah, my neck. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. I think one of the things earlier is like how to learn better grappling. I think Josh said it. Get a stronger neck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fucked my neck up. Yeah, like, yeah. um, yeah. What I fuck up? Um, yeah. I mean, I think that I, I wish, um, and I still wish. I, I I wish I had more time to train than I do. I think that's one of the hardest things, right? I wish I'd found the sport when I was younger. Like, I feel you know, I feel like I'm doing fine for a mat, but like. You know, I, I talk about the time, like, and, and again, this, and I'm going to go back to my little soapbox. If you tell me you don't have time to train, you better be as busy as I am. Yeah. Right. You better have, you better have a full-time job, awesome. better run your own company on the side and also have two kids. Awesome. Right. You better be that before you tell me that you can't find 30 minutes to train three times a week. Even, even then, no. Like I, you, if you you can here's the thing you're not too busy you just don't want to make the sacrifices and that's fine yeah. you get to yeah. say that you everyone yeah. gets to value things in their life yeah but that's, that's it. fine oh yeah that, yeah that's it it's my favorite is it i think it's henry rollins saying quote like there's no such thing as downtime there's just time yeah, yeah. right like that's my favorite quotes like everything you do is a sacrifice yeah. you if i sit and play video games i'm sacrificing that time for, and that's okay, but I need to be aware of that, right? Yeah, and so, like literally tonight, I'm not at the hall because I'm on your street, <laughs> and I chose <laughs> to do that. Dustin's yeah. gonna fucking, he's gonna uh, yeah, ruin Dustin, me. Yeah. He's but I chose to do that. I said, okay, that's a priority for me because it's one. Like, but if you tell me like you can't find time to put in the basics for this, then that like that to me. So I think the area that I wish I was better at, I wish I could train more. Like I wish I had you know more commitment than I do. Like that's my, I always want more commitment than I have, and I'm trying. What did I really mess up though? Um, I think that I wish I had um, I tell you, I went to axe real quick and I love it. Um, I've gone back to fighting with a shield and a hand axe or a shield and a falchion now and I'm trying to learn that better because I think I need to be better at it. Right. Um, I think for, for being two years in uh, I've had a decent number of fights I think for this sport because like, we get the hall which is great um, and it's easy to fall back on what you are comfortable with and when it's a fight that is not a national event, right? Like go out there and try different stuff. Yeah. Right. Like try to have, have fun with this. Like try weird, try things that are different. I, I offered, I offered up like in the live stream I just did, I, I did, I was talking to a bunch of foam fighters and I also offered up the idea. I'm like, I think that steel can take a lot from the other sports. I'm like, go take a day and just go to a foam fighting event. It doesn't take yep. any, it doesn't take any extra gear really. Yep. Uh, most foam fighters have extra gear. Just go in like your gambeson and yeah. run around foam fighting for a gambeson and yeah. you'll, you'll notice and you'll learn things throughout that day uh being able to diversify a little bit i think that gives us a lot more range um and then doing foam doing the foam training that we're doing doing um doing all the different stuff that we're doing with our practices and stuff like that being able to build upon that i think the one thing that i have found in my year um is i've been trying to get better at chopping with a steel bar i want to be able to knock people down with falchion blows i think that's a viable place for me to go because i can just hold them back really far away with my left arm and just start hammering their thighs and go you need to stay here and i'm going to put you on the ground because you don't <laughs> want to get hit anymore yeah. um, i'll tell you actually i got another one and this is one i'm still not good at so i'll be very happy like i'll, I'll always share my own faults because like i think the one thing i need to work on a lot is flexibility right we all do it's, we all do but, like, i'm real i'm probably like the one of the least flexible human beings ever right like like, yeah, like I, so, so for me, I go, but again, it's always that thing of comfort level, right? What do I default to? Yeah. I'm like, oh, if I got 30 minutes, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick things up and put them down. So, so right. go do when, yoga. So when are go you do guys, yoga. when are you guys going to have a, uh, a fighter yoga channel that you do together? Chuck, oh yeah. Do yoga together. Yeah. We do yoga together. I honestly, like, like, that's the one thing, like, that's the thing I don't do. Right. I keep saying I'm going to do it and I keep going and other things get in the way or I think of something else. So like my goal next month is to like add a yoga challenge. Cause I'm doing like a push-up challenge for charity this month so like that was my additional thing do it okay chuck um, we'll do we'll do we'll do a a 20 minute a 20 minute yoga session yeah i'll totally do it like yeah. you know i think too i'll say is like if you're at home right now like most of us are like find stupid challenges and do them like always better to do something than nothing so like again my weakness is i didn't do yoga but the advantage is i did other stuff i still did stuff mm-hmm. so yeah 
Um, Paul, you got anything you wanna you wanna ask? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, what do you, uh, well we already asked like what we could like put out more content about? Yeah. Um, what do you think? The hardest what what's been the hardest part of the journey? Of the motivation. Fuck motivation. Oh, yeah. Motivation I think, is terrible. Um, That's, we're always going to be have problems with that. Hardest part of the journey. Um, I don't know, man. This it's it's such a cool sport. Well, like was it right? was like, it armor? Was it was it getting so your I got armor? Lucky. Was it like I got going into wildly, fighting or what? Yeah, I got wildly lucky, and then I fell into a suit of armor. Essentially, like I was not. I again, I put a video saying don't buy armor, and I literally planned to train for a year. That was my initial plan. Like do a year of training. Cat, a other guy quit whose armor was like the same size as me, and the deal was too good. Yeah. So I was like, all right. And like, Cat was like, I even, I only paid for part of it. Cat gave it to me, and I paid the rest after. Like, I was not planning on it. Right. So like, I was very lucky with that. Partly why I said, like, I don't know as much about armor because I have my awesome suit of armor and I use it. Right. I've upgraded things. I've got like plate legs versus splint and sh- stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. um, but like, so I think that, like, I got lucky, lucky in there. But I do think that the, the, um, the hardest part is been, I mean, COVID has been the hardest part, right? It's like forcing yourself to work out <laughs> and stuff when you don't have like, you're not, you don't have a gym, right? Like yeah. I literally rebuilt my entire backyard when we got stuck at home. Like I landscaped my yard. I put in an entire gravel area. I built a corner of a rail, built myself, um, you know, weight, outdoor weightlifting stuff and two pals. Cause so I was like, if I don't do this, I won't we're do it. Like I, I won't train. Cause like, I'm not going to just, be in my house swinging my sword in the house i'll get in trouble first of all like I, you know like <laughs> no swords i already got it i already got enough dents like in the ceiling from like randomly like oh whoops i hit the uh, ceiling again <sighs> uh, but like i did that because i was like that was important. so covid has been hardest um i think yeah i think the hardest thing is like it's it can be hard to keep going and be motivated in this like sometimes and i think giving yourself the leeway to be like hey that wasn't my best month but i'm gonna be better next month is important um Finding yeah. motivation and finding yeah. finding the, like the horse to get back on kind of thing. Um, yeah, like, I, I made, do something though. Yeah, um, I made a vi- I made a video of like dust yourself off. We've got another fight. Like building that yeah. mental toughness and everything yeah. else like that. And like that's another thing. Like you have to push yourself. You have yeah. you're the one pushing the boulder up the hill. You can't. You, you can stop and you can rest, but you always have to like push the boulder. You have to keep going back to the boulder. And it's a bitch. It's a son of a bitch. It's a yeah. But, um, you, you have to you have to build that fire within yourself and there are times where you have to it gets down to embers and then you have to like rebuild it ref- give it more breath and more flame I know I'm going to yeah. hit every analogy I'm going to try and analogize <laughs> everything <Yeah. laughs> um, fighting like, yeah. like an automobile <laughs> <laughs> like... um, so it, like my thought process has always been like going like going through the day I'm like how can I make myself more efficient killer how can I make myself a more efficient killer? And I'm like, how can I make myself more efficient to bombs. the to bombs. the rules? Bombs. Bogs? Bombs. Uh, bombs. Just grenades. Bombs. That, oh. that works the best. Piss off. Um, I'm talking about rules, yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> um and like that's that's been my whole thing since I started foam fighting and going into retain fighting and then steel fighting. I'm like, how can I do this the most efficient way and be the most violent human possible? And that's the problem I think that Alex has with me saying violence is key. I'm like, no, it's the application of violence as well. He doesn't he doesn't like the fact that like selling Boo Hurt is like straight up like murder. <laughs> he doesn't like selling Boo Hurt as murder machines. He likes selling it as like it's an art form and stuff. I'm like, there's art form to make in war, son. Like yeah, being I, violent I, has its own art. He also I, doesn't like hurting his friends in practice. Um, I so. don't like hurting my friends in practice, yeah. but like chapter matches are practice, Chuck. Oh yeah, yeah. well yeah, but you know what? That's I think that's so. I, I think that's true because we're you you know you were on an executioner, right? Like when I was not, and I was fighting and like got my first nightmares match. That wasn't practice. No. That was my world. So man. that's that was it. Here's the thing, though. It is. It's supposed yeah. to be your world. It's supposed to be the thing you think about. It's still supposed to be practice. Like before, I was an executioner. Before yeah. we had executioners, yeah. Dark Knights. Like the whole point is chapter matches practice. That's how you build to go do the like the next thing. And like yeah. maybe you never get to build to that point, but yeah. like it's the same thing. Yeah. It's like if all you do is spar, that's. Oh no! Yeah, you gotta real, have real fights. But gotta, that's yeah, that's real, what feels yeah. like if you all yeah. you do is spar. That feels like the thing. And then, mm-hmm. but like this, I, I am literally as proud of the national events I have as the chapter match season went undefeated. 
right? Like I, yes. I, I that, I'm as proud of that. Like to me, be. like that was, yeah, because like to me, it was like we got out there every single fight and grinded it out, you know, and like, and and I think that like, so I think and you talk about like one of the things I did wrong. I think that one of the areas that I got really lucky in because again, everyone's motivated by different things, right? For me, it was like, okay, I wanted, I want to be able to do this. Then I did it. I, I was like, oh, I'm doing it. And I was like, oh, now I don't want to let my team down. And I was like, and then I want to be an executioner. Like, that's my goal. Like, I want to do that. Then I got to do that. And there was a period where, like, th- we weren't fighting much. Things were starting to slow down. And it was like, I got complacent. I was like, I made it. And, like, that's a really shitty place to be. Yep. Like, if for me, like, I'm not, I'm not motivated by, like, uh, person not motivated by, like, accolades. Like, I, I want, like, I, I mean, it's nice to get medals and things. Like, I like that. But internally, I'm motivated by what's the next thing you need to do to prove that you belong here, yeah. right? Like, I, if I don't feel like I belong, that's okay because I want to prove to myself I can make it, right? Um, and, like, I think that was an area where I did get complacent for a little bit, and I was like, oh, I made it, yay. And then it was like, oh, wow, I have to get better, right? Like, <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so we're, we're well, uh, well over an hour coming up on hour 15 so uh start to want to round uh wind it down a bit um yeah. what's your like big like you get you get like maybe three pieces what are your three pieces of advice for new fighters that aren't already on your channel besides oh. check out your channel yeah check out my <laughs> channel check out my channel and I'd also watch my channel uh no like honestly I, if no one ever watched my channel it's fine i'm gonna make videos because like it, it, it's <laughs> i'm doing the work anyway and like i'm just gonna t- put it out there um Three pieces of advice. I, I honestly, like I said, I can't stress enough, like conditioning and working out, right? Like, and everyone's bodies are going to be different as far as what they need. Like, there's obviously like, no, we have night fish, which is Tabata hit workouts, right? Like, those are those are awesome, right? Some people are going to have bigger builds and like lifting helps more. And some people it's going to be about being faster. But like, find your strengths and always lean into your strengths when you're new, right? Like, try to figure out what you're good at. Like, we got Will at the hall right now, and Will wants to duel and do long swords, right? That dude is so focused on wanting to be a good long sword fighter, right? Like, he's found what he wants to do, and he, he doesn't want to fight melees, and that's awesome. But he knows what he wants. He's working his ass off for it. And, like, that to me, you go, hey, that's, that's it. Like, find what you want to do and dive in, right? So, like, commit is my first piece. Like, commit and, and give it your all and give it your best and, and get to the level that you can be at. Um, the second thing is if you don't, let's assume you have a school next year, you have a team that you can train with. It's not enough. Like do your work there and do your work at home. Right? Like this is both a, an athletic endeavor, which is in shape, but it's also a skill based sport and it takes thousands of hours to develop a skill. Right? Like no basketball player I've ever met just played games and went to his practice. Like he's out shooting hoops all the time, right? If you're not out train, like swinging your sword and practicing, like yeah, that's like the second one. It's like, you know, just do the work at home. Um, and the third one I'd say is like, have fun with it. Do weird stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like if you don't have events in your area and you've got three or four guys, get together and do a fight, right? Like get together and do something. It's like we just did our match this week, last weekend. It was our first dust off match. I did the Florentine in the fifth round where I fought with two weapons and it was dumb. Right. Like I was exhausted. Like it was round five. I've never done that before. I had no idea what I was doing, but man, like I was cool. You know what I did today for <laughs> power work is I say for power work, I did Florentine with two, two heavy falchions. Cause so I was like, wow, that was exhausting. I'm going to work on building those muscles. Right. And like, what could I have done differently? So like go on, have fun, experiment, keep doing stuff. But like, yeah, that's it. Uh, all right. And like, what's the next big thing you want to get? You've been in two years. You've, you've, yeah. uh, you hit the executioners. You've gone, have you, I'm not sure if you've won a nationals, but you've gone and you placed at a nationals. We placed the two nationals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I want to win it. I want to win a national. I think that's, you know, a thing I, I want to do, obviously. Um, um, I want, yeah, I, I think I said, I want to win a nationals. I want to go overseas, but that's like a benefit to me. Like if I get to that someday, great. If I don't, that's okay. Cause it's, it's obviously a huge commitment and money and all that stuff too. Like that's, but if we make it, I'm going. Um, and I, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think those are the two biggest things. And I, and I want to be the, I want to get to the point where I know I'm the, one of the people that other people come to in our community, right. In our, it can be nationally, but at least regionally, right. Like, 
and, and it doesn't mean I got to be the best, but I want to be reliable enough and committed enough that people go, yeah, when I look at that guy, that's someone that I want to go to, right? Nice. And I use Brandon as a good example. Like Brandon doesn't talk a lot, right? But Brandon leads, right? Like, you know that dude can fight, and you know if you ask him for help, he's going to help you, and, like, that's where I want to be. Um, so mm-hmm. I think that's, that's kind of my end goal. Uh, and then eventually in towards, you know, my goal, by the way, my goal for this is 10 years. That's why when I started the sport, I said I want to fight for 10 years. Hmm. Like that was my goal. I said, I, I said, when I'm buying that armor, I said, that's a big expense. I'm, I want 10 years out of it. Now, hopefully longer, but that's like my, my commitment to myself. So I nice. want to fight for 10 years. Nice. I like that. And if, yeah. And then if I, after that, I'll fight more or maybe I'll coach, but like, I want to be involved in it. Cool. Paul, you got anything? And then, <laughs> I mean, realistically, like just thinking about the future of the sport and the future of where it can go and everything else like that, like, I want to still be around the coach. Uh, I probably won't be fighting. Like, I'll, I'll still fight locally, but, like, five years from now, I probably won't be trying to do, like, national placement stuff. I'd rather be coaching the guys that are going overseas and giving them a better idea because I've studied sword fighting, like, every day. Like, every day has got, like, a half hour of, like, film involved in it somewhere while I'm doing while I'm doing some kind of workout. So, yeah, um, like, I want to be able to do that kind of stuff. But realistically... Um, Chuck, you're doing great stuff on your YouTube channel. Thank I you, think man. everybody I should get it. Really, and honestly, like it's 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 a no no joke. It's a big deal to be like have moved from someone who two years ago was like just showed up to a gym, and then was like, oh, you guys are on TV, <laughs> right? Like you guys had a TV show, and like you guys are fighting in national events, and I see videos you overseas, and then to be like in able to have these conversations again. I don't put myself anywhere at the level of like what you've all done. But like to know that like I can help out in any way is really important to me. So like I appreciate even having me on and and, and want to talk about to me about this. And I'm glad for you because of that, Chuck. Yeah. Because like people willing to put out the information, like give back to the community kind of thing, is extremely important. Because nobody else is trying to help us build the thing. We all yeah. have to help each other, and we all have to keep feeding the beast ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I want that someday. I, I'm hoping this sport gets to the point like where at, in America, where there is no way I could fight at a national level. Yeah. Right? Like I like I want like they're like they're like they, I like they, we're not good enough. No. But right. Like, like I like I said like I gave you a list of all the shit I do outside of this work. I I work out decent. I train. Like I I'm committed. But like I'm not at a camp for like twelve weeks. Like ramping up. Like like I want to get to the point with the sport where someone like me can't has to fight in a beer league. Yeah. Right, yeah. like has to because that you know because again when I play basketball I go play pickup league basketball right and I'm like on the under forty team and that's great, right? But like the, I can't go play in the NBA, dude. Greg, no. Greg sports right? are fun. Greg sports are fun. Um, Greg sports but, are fantastic. But, but I want the sport to be an area where yeah. I do too, but I want to say one of the great things about where we are now is just that that you did that in two years and you got here and, and like yeah if there's anyone new watching right now like that's the big takeaway i think it's like if you put in the work and like obviously chuck had some physical talents coming in he has some sports background but really the big difference is he put in the fucking work right if yep. you put in the fucking work you can get to pretty fucking other decent to national level decent yeah. In a year, in two years, like just outwork people, and you, Brett, Brett, I mean Brett's a fucking, uh, Brett Skinner is a fucking natural, na- natural athlete who has lots of foam background, but still, mm-hmm. he's only three years in, and he's ma- maybe the oh, he's second, awesome. Yeah, he may be the second best fighter, and he, yeah, because he maybe, works his ass off. Maybe, yeah, exactly. He's always training, and like, yeah, and he gets he. Part of that is his job there aren't many fighters I run up against like one on one in a melee that I go oh no I don't want to grapple that dude yeah yeah, yeah. No. and, and Brett's one of them he's right one of them. exactly yeah one of them like yeah and he got there he's, because he's... he put in the work and yeah. it's so so yeah the big takeaway if you want to be good at this you can you can be the best just dude, I the watched the video work. between Carnage and Reno and the difference in my development a year was nuts to me right good. like Carnage I was a body on the field who didn't fall down very often. Right, like not not this twenty 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 or whatever the year was, like not this most recent one, the one year before. Like yeah. we came in second, like we did great, right? But like I was not a deciding factor in that fight. I was a guy who helped and didn't not help, right? But like in that you weren't you Reno, weren't making plays, you weren't. Yeah, starting then I looked at Reno and I was like, oh, I had four takedowns in that round. Yeah. Right, and like that was not because I'm all of a sudden got like significantly like I didn't grow three inches and like you know I didn't put on like those huge muscle mass or like it. I just been training, yeah. 
I've been working on my grappling. I was like, like working what I can do. And like, I would say it's very true. Like anyone who has the natural, the basic athletic abilities and the givens, right? If you work at this, you have an opportunity to be good at it in, in, in this time frame we're in right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy to help anyone who wants to be good at it, but show up and do your work. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you got to get vicious or get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. That is what it is. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh. Um, with that, I think I'm going to close it. Thank both of you for coming on. Thank you, chat. Thank you, everyone who is involved in there. Uh, this is some great stuff. Um, I hope everyone. Thank you very fun. much for having me. Yeah, man. Hey, you really ever appreciate every, it. everyone in this chat better be around at 3 a.m. when I talk to the Australians. Yeah, we're all going to be up for that with you. <laughs> yeah. We'll all be in there. Yeah, I'm really going to be up there for that one. Okay. Yeah, look, yeah, at yeah. least, have, at least, I don't have an least, eight-hour day in the shop tomorrow to do woodworking. I'm definitely going to be up At least watch it afterwards. At least watch it afterwards. I will watch, watch the whole it thing through. I, watch the whole thing. <laughs> I'll put it on yeah. at work and maybe turn on the volume occasionally. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's just going to be a constant stream of like the word cunt because <laughs> Sam's. I do believe Sam isn't. Sam's in the military, and I think Bryce is does, in the military too. Does Sam too, so know a diff, another word? I feel like no, that's all he, he has. doesn't. Uh, I'm going to tell him like, hey, can you tone it down to like every other word that you would use that word for? Just like tone it down to every other, and it'll still be once a sentence, oh, but shit. at least it'll be. <laughs> uh, land is definitely going to be there. It looks like Chris might be. So uh, on Paul's YouTube, you said it's at 3 a.m. Yeah, it's going to be 3 p.m. Uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what time that time zone that is for everybody. And it's going to be on my YouTube. It's going to be a uh, live stream with Sam Ride and Bryce uh, that's, that's, from Team Vultures and Team Havoc. That's Paul the Barbarian on YouTube. Check that shit out. All right, we out. Peace. Boop, Later, bye. Thank you.